But when you say if the clients are all in agreement, I can agree with that. Aren't, aren't you then saying that you would support? Probably I would support. And it's because I know some of those clients personally. And I know they support a full moratorium. That's been the position of um, some of the Native Hawaiian clients, you know. But at the end of the day, in our process, it's all about compromise. And if we're looking at, okay, how can we protect the trust? But we have to give it to something. I think that's where we need to look at the policy. Are we close to it? I can't tell you, you know, right now, because there are a lot of differences that's going on. So even if you were to, you know, put your stamp of approval on this proposal, uh, how do you feel the rest of the House and, and the Senate will view this? Do you think it's something that can be passed out of the legislature? I'm not sure. You're going to have to ask them yourself because, um, you know, as discussions come up, people kind of change some of their positions, you know, so it's hard to, it's hard to judge or gauge. You know, even, I'll give you a perfect example, when I tried to pull out Senate Bill 1085 and even with my Hawaiian caucus members who supported a full moratorium, some of them voted no on it and it could be maybe processed, they didn't agree with suspending the rules. It could be that they've changed their mind on um, a full moratorium or a five-year, I mean, I don't know. So I would just say that working towards a settlement is a good thing. However, you know, I think there needs to be more discussion on what that policy is. And I think that's the broader, the bigger question, is what is that policy going to look like and that we can all live with, you know, to some degree, because it's not going to be 100%. Do you, do you have the proposal that was sent down from the AG's office and is that something we can well, get a copy of? The one that I had, I thought it was the one, but I guess there's another version, so I have to go get that Last one. night yeah. they said there was another version. Like, yeah, geez, so last minute. I was surprised. So who, who would have it? Like? Um, Attorney General or Bill Mahimilo. Yeah, because I don't think, if it's the last night version, I don't think the leadership has it. You may want to try Senate um, President. I, I heard she was part of those discussions as well. I had one more question, if you wouldn't mind. There was, I forget who it was in there that asked, um, or made the comment that she believes that it is in the best interest of all people, not just Native Hawaiians, that this be done accurately or completely or you know, thoroughly. Oh. What would be your statement to that? Because I also agree with that, but I just wondered what you felt about that. How does it benefit non-Hawaiians to wait protecting the trust. This is, okay, if you're looking at it from what the, the Attorney General has been saying all along, that the trust is the people of Hawaii, you know, and there's differences because Native Hawaiians, you know, because of all that has been said and done, you still want to protect the trust because why would you want to sell it? It's a one-time transaction, you know. There's many benefits to generating revenues from land, you know, and the question remains is value. How do you look at value or assess value? You could look at value in how much money you make, but you could also look at value in, in the lives that you enrich, you know. So that's another bigger question. So I think if you look at it from the bigger perspective, and let's say Attorney General is right, it's about protecting the trust for the people. Do you let the people share? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I said excellent. <laughs> you, you were saying that the seem to indicate that the worst thing could happen is that the legislature does nothing, the parties don't agree to drop the suit, the suit comes back. And uh, I'd like you to comment on that a little bit more. Do you, your colleagues share that sentiment too? Are they willing to compromise rather than do nothing? Um, I would say there are some that wants this bill to go away that is okay about the sale of suit and ads. There are some that want some form of policy and there are some that want a full moratorium. I would say we're, we're pretty divided on the issue, and I think if it just goes away, and that's possible in conference, anything could happen. Um, we have no policy, then that's very frightening, because then we haven't protected the trust. Then the, the, the state can sell state events, you know, and what is already in place, a disapproval process, you know. Well, why, why, why do you use the word frightening when this current administration has stated repeatedly and we heard it again several times today that there's no intent to, to sell any ceded lands. Are you, are you afraid for the future? Or? Well, do you trust everybody's word? My point is that 
you can say one thing and tomorrow have a different opinion on something. I mean, I give you a perfect example for an administration that supported early childhood never released the monies as an example for many different reasons. And I'm not just talking from the top of my head and calling anybody names. I'm just saying situations occur, different things happen, and that's why we got to set good policy. Can I just switch gears for a second and talk sure. about the ceded land settlement sure. proposal? Um, where do you see that going now? You've got so many different... Well, right now it just passed out of the House Finance, which I had an opportunity to sit in there, although I'm not a member. Um, it's going to probably go to conference. It'll go to the floor and we'll take it to conference. The difference is, as you see, when the bill is in the Senate and, and when it's in the House, is I've tried to keep it simple. I look at it as a mechanism for OHA to actually start the process in, in receiving some of that settlement, whatever the settlement may be, whether it's land, cash, okay. In this situation, they're looking at land. Now, when we were in the Finance Committee yesterday, and, and it's just a matter of disagreeing with the Attorney General's um, position, their position is basically they want more process in the details of that particular uh, measure. But what he didn't say, and this came out in the finance hearing, was that OHA did call them up. OHA tried to get more pieces of property as far as input as to what about this property or, or that property, and he did not get back to them. So there were two properties that were in the bill, and, and it was the same properties that was in last year's bill, which is, of course, um, Kaka'ako and um, Banyan Drive. But if you remember last year, the reason why the bill died was because there was no consultation. That's why my committee took it out. When we went to Hilo, there was about 99% against. Okay, that's very telling, so I took it out. Now, my colleague in the Senate, he loaded it up with all these pieces of property. But you know what, I don't disagree with the properties that he's put in there, but it could jeopardize the mechanism or the bill to pass. So I have to look at the bigger picture and how to get legislation to move forward. And the reason why we want flexibility for OHA is because we want them to do their due process. We want to make sure that the lands that they're looking at and working on the settlement with the administration is actually truly going to fulfill their mission, which is to generate revenue. But again, I go back to value because the other question on value, because some of the properties that the Senate has put in, is not always money generated. It could be enriching Native Hawaiians and non-Native Hawaiians' lives. So that's another question at a later time. But I see the settlement bill and I'm hopeful that it's going to move forward. But I still got to work with my counterpart in the Senate as to what that compromise is going to look at. So my hope is that we can keep it simple, put the mechanism in place. We still have 2010 to work on legislation with OHA and look at other possible properties. And if we could have the cooperation of the Attorney General to follow through, then we may be able to tighten that legislation in 2010. Is there any way that we can get a complete inventory of all lands? I would love to do that. In Be, fact, because everybody's talking about it, but nobody has the facts. Yeah, or or even make that a condition of yeah, know, some kind of approval that process. You can try and Good put question. pressure to make that happen. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. In 2005, when I first got in, I was the Vice Chair of Hawaiian Affairs, and that was a hot issue. The problem is the cost. And then there was the discussion on, do we go all the way back to the Great Mahele, or do we start from today? And then the auditor's concern was how do we certify the report on the inventory and there was talk about University of Hawaii students in the Hawaiian Studies program, they doing the research, cut some costs, but who certifies that information? So there's a lot of discussion around it and that's why I failed. The price tag at that time was $30 million. Today we don't have that kind of money. And yes, it is important. Well, and I, and I there's a lot of people is, that want. This is, has everything to do with this whole issue. Absolutely. What it's about. <laughs> we got to go find the money to do this, it. This is, I think, is number one for And yeah. that should be a reason why we should protect the trust exactly. before any lands are sold. You know. Might so. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. Thank you.